People who have great ability to concentrate, great ability to focus, great ability to define and stay consistently within their priorities tend to be very successful in this world. And self-discipline is an essential component in that, whether you're talking about some kind of academic achievement, some kind of musical achievement or athletic achievement or whatever it is, some achievement in the realm of business or the arts or science, generally comes to people who are very focused and who understand how to order their priorities. In a word, they are disciplined people. I've, I've always been disciplined myself because I've always lived a disciplined life. I lived in a disciplined household, like there was no such thing as I don't want to. So even now, if I wake up and I don't want to do something, I don't need someone to tell me to do it, so I'll do it anyway. Being a man isn't about not feeling things. It's about acting the way you're supposed to act regardless of how you feel. We act. We're men of action. We get things done. So the world got built. All of it. You need to become a man of action. Stop worrying about how you feel. Stop worrying about what you're supposed to be doing. How about that? But what happens is, if you believe that there's very little potential, how much action are you going to take? Nothing, little. But they take little action, little results. Why? Because they have to start with a problem with their belief. They don't believe it's really going to happen for me. Maybe for Frank Kearns because he's got the cool hair and stuff. Or maybe it's for you because you're so driven, but it's not me. Maybe Tony Robbins because he's a freak, got these big teeth. Whatever their thought process <laughs> is, right? They got this thing, right? And when you take little potential with a little action, what kind of results do you get? Lousy little results. And when you get little results, what does that do to your belief? You go, see, I told you this was a waste of time. And then what happens? You tap even less potential. You take even less action. You get even worse results, and your belief gets even weaker. And this sucker feeds on itself until you are in a downward spiral. It's poisonous. It's poisonous, and it's self-fulfilling. Now, what if something could happen that could come along and fill you with a sense of absolute certainty? Not like, I believe, but me, where you know. In you guys' case, mine as well, we knew because we had to because we burned the boats. There was no other option. We had to find a way. We had, we weren't going to live that way. We all did it in different ways and for different reasons, but in essence, that was it. If you get yourself in a state of certainty that this is going to work, I'm going to find a way, and if this doesn't work, I will make the way, then you tap a lot more potential. And when you're certain in your potential, you take massive action. When you take massive action, you really believe in something, you get great results. When you get great results, your brain goes, see, I told you I was a stud. I told you this thing would work out. Now you're even stronger. You tap more potential, take greater action, greater results. That's how you went from 300 bucks in a week to 2,500 in five days to 100,000 in a month to a million bucks in a day. Same thing with you. And we get momentum. That's why the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. If you just make a decision, it can be sometimes the day that starts you on a brand new journey. Sometimes when you look back on it, the day that you decided was just about as exciting as the day when you finally accomplished the project. That when you finally made the decision, you finally you know, got through whatever barriers kept you from making that decision, and finally you made a decision. Now some decisions are incidental, and some are small, and some you know, are, are part of a working day. But sometimes decision making can be one of the most important days of your life. Maybe a decision you've postponed and postponed and now you understand the penalty of postponing that decision. You've got to do something and finally you come to the conclusion today is the day. I now decide. And whether you decide on a new direction, whether you decide on a refinement in philosophy, whether you decide to act when before you haven't acted, you decide on a series of things that you're going to do, you decide. Deciding can be a, such an incredibly important very exciting, inspirational day. So that can be an incredible source of inspiration. Now, if you don't follow through, it's not gonna last all that long. If you decide and then, you know, postpone and, and you decide and, but you don't still don't get to it for a week or a month or a year, you know, soon all that energy and that source of inspiration is all dissipated. I believe that the single most important skill is the ability to make effective decisions. Because everything comes from decision. You only get new results if you take new actions. You only take new actions if that decision comes first. In other words, decision is the father or mother of all action. But not all decisions are equally good, as we all know. And the quality of our life comes down to the quality of our decisions. You want action. Action means you have to make some decisions along the way. 
And decisions, most people are so afraid to make the wrong decision, they don't make any decision. That is what you really need to be afraid of, being stagnant. So, get up and go. That idea isn't going to execute itself. You have to do it, and you have to do it now. Don't wait anymore. Don't think anymore. Don't plan anymore. Don't contemplate anymore. Don't make any more excuses or justifications. Don't rationalize anything else. No. Take the risk. Take the gamble. Take action now. No complacency. By uh, 66, Pompey had already earned the title Magnus making him, in fact, and in name, Pompey the Great. He had reconquered Spain. He had served as Rome's consul, not once, but twice. He had defeated Spartacus in the Third Servile War. And now he was being sent to dispatch the Cilician pirates who terrorized the Mediterranean. Before he left, he stopped for a private consultation with the Stoic philosopher Posidonius, one of the great minds of the ancient world. Posidonius' advice might have seemed rather redundant. Be the best and always superior to others. He had told the ambitious general, quoting a line from the Odyssey. But Posidonius wasn't talking about achieving more victories over the enemy. He was talking about conquering the self, not honors, but being honorable. Plutarch tells us about a far less famous general and statesman in Greece, many generations before Pompey. Despite his brilliance on and off the battlefield, Epaminondas was appointed to an insulting minor office in Thebes. In fact, it was because of his brilliance that he was put in charge of the city's sewers. Instead of being provoked or despairing at his irrelevance, a number of jealous and fearful rivals thought it would effectively end his career. Epaminondas took fully to his new job, declaring that it is not the office that brings distinction to the man. It is the man who brings distinction to the office. With hard work and earnestness, Plutarch wrote, he proceeded to transform that insignificant office into a great and respected honor, even though previously it had involved nothing more than overseeing the clearing of dung and the diverting of water from the street. Best is the person who adds shine to their accomplishments with their discipline, not the other way around. This is what Poseidonius was trying to tell Pompey, although Pompey failed to fully realize it. In the end, it's not about what we do, it's about how we do it, and by extension, who we are. Too often, we find people choosing to be great at their profession over being a great human being, believing that success or art or fame or power must be pursued to the exclusion of all else. Does it have to be that way? Does being loved have to be at odds with being lovely? Or can temperance, as Cicero claimed, be the fine Polish on top of a great life? Queen Elizabeth inherited the monarchy. Marcus Aurelius was selected for the purple as a boy, but it wasn't the throne that made either of them kingly. It was their behavior. They were what the ancients called first citizens for their character as much as their rank. As Marcus said, his aim was never to be the most powerful king, never to conquer the most territory, or build the most beautiful buildings. Instead, he was after perfection of character, to live your last day, every day, without frenzy or sloth or pretend. It just happens that wonderful external accomplishments, like those achieved by Elizabeth and Marcus, can come out of internal endeavor. They are not the goal, they are the byproduct, Conquering the world is almost easy after we have fully conquered ourselves. Certainly fewer people have done the latter than the former. This is what you find when you study the true masters of any profession. They don't care much about winning, about money, about fame, about most of the things that have come their way as a result of their success. Their journey has always been towards something bigger. They aren't running a race against the competition. They are in a battle with themselves. Self-discipline has never been about punishment or deprivation. It is about becoming the best, the best that you are capable of becoming. The battle to be the best has less to do with beating others and more to do with beating down those urges. 
those flaws, those selfish instincts that every human has. There was never enough for Pompey, nothing sacred. His endless ambition, his insane love of glory, as Poseidonius called it, would ally him with Caesar, setting in motion the destruction of the Republic he once loved. He would wake up to this Faustian bargain eventually and fight valiantly to preserve Rome, but it would be too late. He would be defeated by Caesar's armies at Phasaelus in a day, losing everything that he had acquired and then shortly thereafter losing his life as well. His last words would quote another ancient playwright, Sophocles. Whoever makes his journey to a tyrant's court becomes his slave, although he went there a free man. By chasing the wrong kind of best, fame, fortune, power winning, Pompey had chained himself to the worst. It cost him everything. As it does for all of us, when we compromise, when we relax our discipline, when we make exceptions and do what is expedient instead of what we know is right. History is replete with great conquerors. There are far fewer generals who were great people. Talented writers, groundbreaking scientists, incredible athletes, bold entrepreneurs. All these types are rare. Rarer still, and all the more impressive, are those who manage to achieve these feats without losing control of themselves, without becoming slaves to their ambition, to their careers, to their urges. Who will you be? What race are you running? Who are you trying to beat? And is it for the best 